بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته في البداية أرحب بزميلي السيد أنتوني بلينكن وزير خارجية الولايات المتحدة الأمريكية الصديقة في مدينة الدوحة نلتقي اليوم في ظل ظروف حرجة ومؤسفة مع استمرار التصعيد في الأراضي الفلسطينية المحتلة وغزة وإسرائيل ونتابع جميعا هذه التطورات بحزن وقلق بالغين طبت مع زميلي مباحثات صريحة وعميقة في هذا الشأن حيث ناقشنا الأبعاد السياسية والإنسانية لهذه الأزمة وخلال حديثنا أعدت التأكيد على موقف دولة قطر الثابت من إدانة كافة أشكال استهداف المدنيين وهنا أشدد أن قتل المدنيين الأبرياء خاصة الأطفال والنساء وممارسة سياسة العقاب الجماعي أمر غير مقبول تحت أي ذريعة ويجب أن تكون هذه الإدانات موجهة إلى كل طرف يتورط في ذلك وفي هذا الصدد حرصنا منذ اليوم الأول مع من اندلاع المواجهات إلى السعي لخف التصعيد والتهدئة وصولا إلى وقف القتال بشكل تام وذلك لحقن الدماء وتجنيب المنطقة خطر الانزلاق في دائرة عنف أوسع تدفع ثمنها شعوبنا التي أنهكتها الحروب والصراعات تتمثل أولويات تحركات دولة قطر الدبلوماسية في السعي في السعي للوقف الفوري لإطلاق النار وحماية المدنيين وإطلاق صراح الأسرة والعمل للحد من اتساع رقعة العنف ودائرة النزاع في المنطقة والتي سيكون لها عواقب وخيمة في حال تمددها كما تبادلنا وجهات النظر حول سبل فتح ممرات إنسانية لضمان وصول الإغاثة والمساعدات لشقاء الفلسطينيين العالقين تحت القصر لا سيما في ظل تدهور الأوضاع في قطاع غزة وفي هذا الصدد ننوه إلى الوضع المأساوي الذي نراه في غزة في ذلك في بما في ذلك النقص في المواد الأساسية وانقطاع الكهرباء بسبب القصف الذي يشن على القطاع وندرك جميعا أننا أمام واقع صعب ومرحلة تستوجب تضافر الجهود والمساعي لذا نشدد على ضرورة تعزيز جهودنا مع الحلفاء والشركاء وخاصة الولايات المتحدة الأمريكية من أجل تهدئة الأوضاع وتجنيب المدنيين تبعات هذه المواجهات نحن على يقين بأن السبيل الوحيد للتوصل لحل سلمي وفوري لهذه الأزمة هو إبقاء كافة قنوات الاتصال مفتوحة مع جميع الأطراف المعنية وأن حل هذه الأزمة يتطلب تعاونا مستمرا ومكثفا ونثمن الجهود الأقليمية والدولية والأممية التي من شأنها خفض التصعيد تؤمن دولة قطر إيمانا راسخا بأهمية الوساطة والحوار وتعتبر ذلك جزءا لا يتجزأ من سياستنا الخارجية ولطالما سعد دولة قطر إلى إبقاء قنوات التواصل مفتوحة مع مختلف الأطراف في مختلف ساحات الصراع وهو ما ساهم في ترسيخ مكانة قطر الدولية كشريك موثوق في صناعة السلام وينبغي لنا أن نشدد هنا بأن, بأن التزام دولة قطر بدورها كشريك في صناعة السلام ووسيط في فض النزاعات لا يجب أن يتم استغلاله للإساءة لسمعة بلادي عبر كيل الاتهامات والتي أثبتت التجارب السابقة زيفها وسوء نية المتاجرين بها كما نشدد بأن غياب الحل العادل للقضية الفلسطينية سيكون دائما مرافقا لغياب السلام في هذه المنطقة وعلى المجتمع الدولي أن يضغط باتجاه تحقيق حل عادل وشامل للقضية الفلسطينية في إطار المبادرة العربية والتي تضمن إقامة دولة فلسطينية مستقلة على حدود عام 1967 وعاصمتها القدس الشرقية وأن يحصل الأشقاء الفلسطينيين على حقوقهم بشكل نهائي نتطلع للمواصلة للعمل مع شركائنا في الولايات المتحدة وجهودنا الرامية لخفض التصعيد في الأراضي الفلسطينية المحتلة وإسرائيل وتعزيز أمن واستقرار المنطقة والسلام عليكم ورحمة الله Well, good evening. Um, let me start by expressing my gratitude to the Emir and to the Prime Minister, my friend Mohammed, for, uh, as always, very productive discussions. Uh, Qatar has been a very close partner to the United States on a broad range of issues that are crucial to both of our countries uh, and to this region, uh, from working together on evacuating Americans, Afghans, and others from Afghanistan, to cooperating very closely uh, in responding to humanitarian emergencies like the devastating earthquakes in Turkey and in Syria. Um, we're meeting today at what is a difficult 
but also consequential time for the region in the wake of Hamas's appalling attack that killed more than 1,300 Israelis, at least 27 American citizens, and people from more than 30 countries. The United States and Qatar share the goal of preventing this conflict from spreading. Uh, we discussed in detail our efforts to prevent any actor, state or non-state, from creating a new front uh, in this conflict. We're also working intensively together to secure the release of hostages, including American citizens, being held by Hamas in Gaza. I'm grateful for the urgency that Qatar is bringing to this effort. I had an opportunity to meet yesterday with the families of some of those being held hostage by Hamas. Their anguish is profound. They're desperate to bring their loved ones home. And we are ur working urgently on that uh, effort. Uh, we're doing that with Qatar, and we're doing that with allies and partners across the region. As Israel continues to respond to Hamas's devastating attack, the United States will ensure that it has what it needs to defend its people. Uh, Secretary of Defense Austin was in Israel today doing just that working closely with the Israelis to make sure that we're providing them what they need and that we'll be able to do that on an ongoing basis. At the same time, we're in constant communication with Israeli officials and with multilateral and international organizations, humanitarian organizations, including the United Nations agencies, including the ICRC, to get aid to civilians in Gaza. As I said yesterday in Tel Aviv, Israel has the right, indeed it has the obligation, to defend its people and to try to ensure that Hamas can never repeat what it's done. We continue to discuss with Israel the importance of taking every possible precaution to avoid harming civilians. We recognize that many Palestinian families in Gaza are suffering through no fault of their own, and that Palestinian civilians have lost their lives. We mourn the loss of every innocent life, Israeli, Palestinian, Jew, Christian, Muslim, as well as civilians of every faith and every nationality who have been killed. Let's not lose sight of why this is happening. Israel is conducting operations in Gaza because Hamas carried out terrorist attacks that killed, in the most horrific ways, 1,300 of its people. Hamas terrorists slaughtered, raped, mutilated, tortured, burned innocent civilians from babies to the elderly, men, women, boys and girls. Now, efforts to get humanitarian aid into Gaza are complicated by the fact that Hamas continues to use innocent civilians as human shields and is reportedly blocking roads to prevent Palestinians from moving to southern Gaza out of harm's way. We know the humanitarian situation is urgent. We're actively engaged with partners, including Qatar, to get aid to those who need it. Your Excellency, thank you again for today's very, very good discussions and for all the work that our countries have done together. Thank you. حسن تكلم التلفزيون العربي سؤال الأول موجه لمعالي رئيس مجلس الوزراء وزير الخارجية القطري تتداول وسائل الإعلام كثيرة في واقع الأمر أنه تم الاتفاق على تجميد الستة مليارات دولار من أصول إيران هنا في قطر ما دقة هذه المعلومات؟ السؤال الثاني موجه لي معالي وزير الخارجية الأمريكي سيد أنطوني بلينكن سيد أنطوني بلينكن هل علمتم أنتم وفي الإدارة الأمريكية بأن عدد الضحايا في غزة يفوق 1500 ضحية ثلث هؤلاء للأسف من الأطفال التقرير من هناك تثبت هذا وأيضا اليونسف أسألك بوضوح وأتمنى منك أيضا أن تجيبني بوضوح ما الذي ستفعله الولايات المتحدة باعتبارها راعية للديمقراطية وحقوق الإنسان في العالم ما الذي ستفعله حتى لا يموت طفل آخر في غزة هذه الليلة شكرا Thank you. بالنسبة لسؤال بخصوص تقارير الصحفية عن تجميد الأموال الإيرانية في قطر 
طبعا هذه اولا دوله قطر تلتزم باي اتفاق هي طرف فيه ولا يتم العمل على اي خطوه دون التشاور مع الاطراف Qatar will not be used unless all the conditions of the agreement are fulfilled and we should focus on our priorities and that is to reduce tension and create a situation of calm and put an end to the current war waged against our brothers in Gaza and reach solutions to avoid any more confrontations and crises. Thank you for the question. A few things. As I said uh, just a moment ago, and I'll repeat it, uh, Israel has both the right and even the obligation to defend its people, to do everything it can to that Saturday never happens again. Uh, at the same time, the way Israel does this matters. Uh, the way any democracy deal with such a situation matters, and to that end, we've discussed with the Israelis, uh, urged the Israelis to use every possible precaution uh, to avoid harm to civilians. Um, it's also important to remember the fundamental issue that makes this so complicated. As I said again a moment ago, Hamas uses civilians as human shields, it puts them in places where they will be in danger puts them in places where they're used, in effect, to try to protect uh, Hamas officials uh, or their equipment or infrastructure. Civilians, of course, should not be the target of military operations. They are not the target of Israeli operations. They are very deliberately the target of Hamas's action. Um, I mentioned as well that we're very actively engaged with UN relief agencies, with the ICRC, with others to address the acute humanitarian needs of people in Gaza, to protect them from harm, uh, and uh, to make sure that they have uh, the ability uh, to get what they need. Uh, we need to ensure, for example, that there are safe areas in Gaza uh, for civilians. We're working through the details on that, uh, and uh, more to be said in the days ahead, but that's a priority for us. Uh, we're discussing this with the Israeli government. We're discussing it with others. Second question from Al Jazeera. Good evening, Your Excellency. My name is Ahmed Al Jassim from Al Jazeera. My question pertains to the content of communication since the breakout of these hostilities. We know the state of Qatar was keen to make contact with some countries: Iran, the United States, Jordan, France, and other countries. What is the content of these communications and what are you basing them on? In the previous days, since the outbreak of this crisis, His Highness the Emir has initiated contact, and I have initiated contact with my counterparts. We have specific aims at this stage. We are trying to reduce the tension and we hope that this war will come to a uh, halt and the humanitarian corridors are secured so that humanitarian aid can reach the Gaza Strip and also the, the civilian prisoners who are being taken from Israel who are working on making sure that uh, they will be released. This, the role of the state of Qatar focuses on finding solutions for this crisis and avoid the crisis spilling over to other fronts and countries. Our priorities focus on, first of all, stopping the war and uh, making sure humanitarian aid is delivered and the prisoners are returned home. Third question from Reuters. Thank you. Um, Sheikh Mohammed, given the condemnation from the world on Hamas attack, 
Is Qatar considering shutting down Hamas Bureau? Are you prepared to ask the leadership to leave if your Western allies demand you to do so? And Mr. Secretary, have you asked Qatar to shut down the Hamas office? And if I may, Mr. Secretary, yesterday and just now, you said Israel has a right to defend itself, but you added that how it does that mattered. And you talked about a standard that democracies should strive for even when it's difficult to do so. Today, Israel ordered residents of Gaza City to leave and move south, something UN Palestinian envoy just called a crime against humanity. Um, we did, the translation wasn't great, so the gentleman before me might have asked something similar, but let me push you a little bit more on this. How does that square, how does that order square with that standard you mentioned and also international law? Does the United States support this relocation? And since we had a conversation with Prime Minister Netanyahu, did you give your blessing for this move? Thank you. It's, uh, thank you. Please. Well, uh, regarding your question about uh, Hamas political office uh, in Doha right now, uh, actually, this office, since it's started, it's been used as a way of communicating and communicating and bringing peace and calm to the region, uh, uh, not to instigate uh, uh, any war. And this is the purpose of, of that office, as long as we are keeping the communication open right now and focusing on putting an end for this conflict, and this is useful. That's, uh, that will remain our main focus uh, these days. Uh, uh, actually, uh, uh, now our key, uh, our key focus for us in the state of Qatar, and I believe the United States sharing with us this objective, is how to put an end for this conflict, how to de-escalate, how to create a humanitarian corridor, and how uh, to get the hostages back safe. Amara, first, uh, regarding this part of your question, uh, let me start by saying, I mentioned this before, but I want to repeat it. Um, I really thank uh, Qatar for the work that they're doing to try to help secure the release of uh, plastic. Uh, this is something that we deeply appreciate. I know that other countries do as well, and it's something that we're actively pursuing. Um, I've also been making it clear in all of my conversations uh, throughout this trip that there can be no more business as usual with Hamas. Murdering babies, burning families to death, taking little children as hostages, these are unconscionable acts of brutality. Every country, in our judgment, needs to condemn these actions, needs to hold them accountable, and we will continue to make that clear. When it comes to providing for civilians in, uh, in Gaza, both um, ensuring that they can be out of harm's way and that they can have access to the uh, support that they need, the humanitarian assistance, the food, the medicine, the water. Our focus now is on helping to create safe zones, and we're doing that with the uh, leading international organizations. We're doing that uh, engaged with Israel and we're working uh, with other countries to, the, to that end. So that's where our focus is. We think this is the best way to make sure that um, civilians who are caught in a crossfire of Hamas's military can be uh, uh, safe and receive the assistance they need. Thank you. Final question from Bloomberg. Mr. Secretary, I know the situation in Israel is highly charged and very fluid, but are you worried about the medium and long-term consequences of what's unfolding in Gaza? Are you worried that Israel may be simply retaliating in a fury because of the horrendous nature of these attacks and might not have a medium or long-term plan? And secondly, I'm wondering how worried are you about a second front in this war? Iran and Hezbollah have already made threats of opening this new front if attacks on civilians and the or in an Israeli blockade of Gaza continues. Um, what would the U.S. response be if Hezbollah ramps up its own attacks, for instance, in response to a ground invasion? Uh, and Sheikh Mohammed, the U.S. and Israel are both struggling with this tragic and fluid hostage situation that, that the Secretary was talking about. 
and have looked for Qatar to help uh, navigate it. Can you tell us about your engagements with Hamas, and are you optimistic about getting these people back alive, given reports that some of them may have already died in Israeli strikes on Gaza? And secondly, there have been rising criticism and protests across the Arab world uh, as, Isra as Israel's retaliation continues. What's your view of how Israel is conducting its military response? And are you worried about the potential, are you also worried about the potential for medium and long-term consequences of what's happening? Thank you. Um, Ian, thank you very much. First part of the question, uh, no country, no country can tolerate having a terrorist group slaughter its people in the most unconscionable way and live like that. What Israel is doing is not retaliation. What Israel is doing is defending the lives of its people and, as I said, trying to make sure that this cannot happen again. And I think any country faced with what Israel has, uh, has suffered uh, would likely do the same thing. Imagine if this had happened in the United States. So that's what is happening. Of course, you're, uh, it's important to think about, uh, as one might put it, uh, the day after and where this goes. And I believe that is really part of uh, Israel's thinking as well as our own and the thinking of many other countries in the region. Because one thing is for sure, uh, we can't go back to the status quo that allowed this to happen in the first place. So that has to be part of it, thinking, and, and it is. But the immediate focus, again, is on making sure that uh, Israelis are protected, defended, and that, again, this um, can't be allowed to be repeated. With regard to uh, a second front, to put it, yes, this is something that's, that we're very focused on. We have been from day one. We want to make sure that no other country or entity try to take advantage of the situation. The President's been very, very clear about that. Um, he said very starkly that any state or non-state actor considering that should not. Don't do it. And he's backed that up in a number of ways, including, as I mentioned the other day and as is known, deploying our largest aircraft carrier battle group uh, to uh, the Ukrainian. That's clearly designed to help ensure that uh, anyone contemplating getting engaged uh, doesn't do it. Uh, but beyond that, a big part of my own conversations here throughout this trip, uh, including today, following up the next couple of days, is working with other countries to make sure that they're using their own contacts, their own uh, influence, their own relationship to make that case that uh, no one else should be uh, taking this moment to choose to create uh, in some other place. I should mention as well that, that earlier today I uh, had a very good conversation with uh, President Abbas and the Palestinian Authority. And among other things, the Palestinian Authority is um, acting effectively to uh, try to ensure that there is a security and stability in the West Bank, uh, something that is very much appreciated. as they've been in the past with Israel to that effect. So in, in each of these areas, yes, this is a this is a focus and it's very important that it's not expand other places. Regarding uh, your question about uh, the progress on, on the hospital, actually it's very early to judge uh, with the intensity of the of the war right now how how hopeful we are but we are, we have to be always hopeful in order to get the those hospitals back i think that uh, the progress will be determined in the next few days hopefully and we will see if there will be uh, a positive prospect for that but uh, we are doing our best our partners are doing their best in order to get them released uh, safely on our views on the Israeli response uh, in Gaza. We see, we have seen the amount of devastation that's hit uh, Gaza, which 
almost now half have been distracted and the number of people who have been killed uh, uh, throughout this uh, operation is significant and we believe that human beings are human beings everywhere whether they are in Israel or Palestinians uh, they have the same value and uh, uh, this is deeply painful for all of us and we would like to see uh, uh, international law applied here and uh, also the same standards that we apply to uh, any war being applied in, in that we are trying our best in keeping the communication open in order to ensure that uh, uh, the humanitarian suffering doesn't continue and moving ahead uh, with the humanitarian messages uh, uh, for, for the aid to be provided to them. We cannot uh, deprive uh, the people in Gaza from electricity, water, and uh, medicine, and like all the means uh, of life, uh, we believe that the situation is very dangerous. On the future uh, prospect of this, the entire situation is very worrying for the entire region, and we believe in the absence of any political horizon and hope for the Palestinians, we, this uh, issue will keep uh, on going, unfortunately. So that's why we need to focus on how the day after will be dealt with and how we can create a political horizon and hope for the Palestinian people. Now we've come to the conclusion of this press conference. Thank you, Your Excellencies, and ladies and gentlemen, thank you.